Hello. In this lesson, we're going to start adding the final details onto our mouse. And if you'll remember, we did a larger radius in the back and a smaller radius in the front. So if we switch to rendered mode, we get a little crisp kind of line around here and a big fat radius back here. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping, clean up some things. I want to select all of the curves that are in the file at the moment that are visible. And there's two ways to do that. I can go up to Edit, Select Objects, and I can choose Curves. And that'll choose everything here. Let me switch Gumball off. Or we can go up here to the toolbar, and this is the Select menu up here. And if we click this icon, that'll also select the curves. I'll just move these over to the Curve layer. And I'll right-click, and I'll select Change Object Layer. And the curve layer is currently switched off, so immediately as the curves switch to that layer, they become invisible. If I want to bring them back, I can just switch that layer back on. Now currently, the only piece of data in the scene is this poly surface of the mouse. We are going to end up cutting it into pieces. You can see right now it's purple, and that's showing up on the purple layer, which is named Upper. So let me go ahead and change the layer order here. I'll select Upper, and I'll just click this icon and move it down in the menu tree. And I'm just going to change this layer to middle. And I'll change this layer to bottom. And I'm also going to switch this from white to a different color, just to make it a little bit easier to see when I'm in my other modes, my wireframe mode and things like that. So I now have upper, middle, and bottom layer. And as I mentioned, the mouse is currently only on the upper layer. So if I switch that off, everything disappears. So let's go ahead and look at our placed sketches that are in the scene, just to kind of remind ourselves what the design is going to be. So I'll switch off upper layer, and I'll switch on the 2D images layer. So you can see from the side view, we have these two character lines, and we're going to go ahead and put those in next. And if I come up to the top view here, you can see that top character line travels the whole way around the object, which will be this curve here. Let's go ahead and switch 2D images back off. I'll bring upper back out. So we have some curves that are on the curve layer that we want to work with here. And what I'll probably do is I'll create a new layer and I'll call that construction curves. And I'll leave that as black because it gives me a nice bold curve color to look at. And I'll switch off upper layer temporarily. And I'm going to go to the right view here. So if I'm in the right view, and I switch on my 2D images, you can see I've got this line that's fully going through the object. And this line here actually is this curved shape. So that's not going to help me out for making this detailed line. So I do have a line that I hid a little earlier. So let me go ahead and retrieve that. So I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button. And when I get this icon here of the hide objects, if I hold down this little triangle, I get this fly out. If I click this icon here, that is Show Selected Objects. If I click this, you'll see the screen changes. It shows me everything on visible layers that's been hidden. So I happen to know that this is the line that I want to bring back. So I can select it and then press Enter. As soon as I press Enter, we'll exit this hidden mode and we'll go back into our normal view. And let me go back to that right viewport. So now you can see I have that curve that fully extends beyond the object and this curve here, which fully extends beyond the object. I'll switch that layer off to simplify things. So I'll go ahead and I'll select these two objects, and I'll right mouse click on the layer name construction curves. And now I'll select Copy Objects to Layer. And when I deselect, it doesn't look like anything's happened, and that's because there's still a copy on this blue layer of those curves. But if I switch this layer off, you'll now see that there are curves on the construction layer. And if I switch construction layer off and bring the blue curve layer back, you'll see those curves still remain there as well. So now we have a duplicate of those curves on the layer named construction. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll bring back my upper data layer. And let's go to the right view for just a moment here. Let me switch to my shaded view. That's not showing me all the info I want, so let me go ahead and switch to my ghosted view, and that's Control-Alt-G. So now if we look at this, in my ghosted view, I have my line that's going to intersect the lower and the upper halves, and I don't see any intersecting areas there that could cause me any problems, so that looks fine. 
What I do notice is as this curve here comes across, it's intersecting this parting line right here. Now this could give us some real problems as far as cutting up the surfaces and doing fillets and things like that. So in order to help myself out, I'm going to adjust the design just a little bit here. And if it were really critical that we had to stick to this exact design, there are workarounds to get through putting fillets on and making sure that there are any issues. But for this design, I can modify this curve just slightly. You'll never notice the difference. And it'll make working on the mouse a lot easier. So I have the curve highlighted. I'm just going to press F10. And as soon as I do that, you see the control points show up for this. So I'm just going to drag the control points. And I'm going to nudge this up. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And by pressing my up arrow key, you can see I can move the control points around. If I want to move them a little further, if I hold down Shift, it'll move them much further each time. Now that's gotten this control point out of the rough area here, which is this parting line. But it's gotten a little too high up in the back. So I'm going to grab these two controls back here. And now I'll move these down. And then finally, I'll drag this one just by itself, just to kind of start to bring that back a little bit more. And let me bring the front down just a bit. And I want to switch off the control points. I can go ahead and hit Escape twice. So now I have my main closed poly surface, and I have these two lines, which I'm going to use to cut the object. So let's go over to Perspective. And they're just going to walk through this. So I'll click on these two curves. And I'll go up to Surface, Extrude Curve, and I'm just going to extrude it straight. And as you can see, I have both sides set to Yes. So as I drag out, it's going to drag in both directions. If I had this switched to No, it's only going to drag in the one direction. But because this curve is on my center line of the mouse, I'll click both sides yes, and then just drag out. So there you go, I have my object, and I have my two planes that I'm going to use as my cutting surface. So I can select this object, and I come up to my Boolean commands, and I'm going to choose Boolean Split. As you can see, the command line is now asking me to choose the cutting surfaces or poly surfaces. So I'll just select both of these surfaces I just created, and I'll hit Enter. I'll select those surfaces, delete them. And now when I select these objects, you can see it selects in different pieces. That may not be completely clear yet, so let me go ahead and put them on different layers, and you'll really get a better idea of what we just did. So I'll select this part. I'll come over to my Layer Properties. Right-click on Bottom, and select Change Object Layer. Select the middle piece, and then right-click on Middle, Change Object Layer. So now we have the object. It's cut in three different pieces. And what's nice about this, if I switch off the upper layer and the bottom layer, you can see that the pieces it left behind are still solids. So because we did a Boolean command, we did a Boolean split, it went ahead and it capped those objects after it cut them, whereas a normal split would have left us with open objects. And because we wanted to put some nice fillet edges on this, we wanted these objects to be closed. So the first thing I'll do is we'll have a pretty generous parting line between the upper and the lower surface. So to make things clear, I'll work on these one at a time, but I could work on these all at once. So let me switch the upper and the middle layers off and I'll switch off the Construction Curve layer. So now I can either go to Solid, select Fillet Edge, or I can come over to the toolbar and select this icon here and left-click on it. So now the command line shows us the Select Edges to Fillet command. And I can see that the radius is set to 1. That's going to be a little bit larger than I want. I'll type 0.5, hit Enter, and now the default radius is set to 0.5 millimeters. Now one of my favorite new things in Rhino 5 is this Chain Edges command in the Fillet Edge. I use this all day long. So now if I click on Chain Edges, I can just click on this edge. So even if this wasn't one continuous surface going around, as long as the next edge is tangent, it's selecting all the way around for me. So that's a big time saver. Everything's selected there, so I'll press Enter, Enter again, 
And I do want to hit preview just to get an idea of how large these radiuses are. So I can zoom in and just take a better look at that. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'll hit enter again to apply it. So now if I switch to render mode, control alt R, you can see we've added this little tight fillet to the edge here. Back out a little bit. And we'll go back to shaded mode, control alt S. I'll switch the bottom layer off and I'll switch the middle layer on. We're gonna reapply the command. So I'll come up here, fillet edge. It still remembers that 0.5 was my last radius. And I click chain edges again. And I'll select there. It fills in any information and selects all the way around for me. I'll hit enter again. I get the preview. Everything looks okay there. And I'll just go ahead and hit enter to apply it. So now you can see what's happened that time is it hasn't actually applied that fillet. And if I look here, it's because that fillet is getting up a little bit too close to this parting line. So what I'll do is I'll undo that one. Let's apply the command again. So instead of 0.5, let's try a 0.4. And this time we don't have to select the edge. All we have to do is hit previous edge selection. And it remembers which edge we selected last. Let's hit enter. And we'll zoom in here just to see how that's looking. And that looks like we're going to be okay getting through that space this time. So there you go, you see that work this time. Let me turn that layer back on and we can get an idea of what our parting line really looks like. I'll bring the upper mouse back as well. And we'll go to render mode. So you see we have a nice generous parting line between the lower and the upper housings. So now you can see we have a nice generous parting line between the lower and the upper section of the mouse. And that concludes this lesson. We'll finish adding the details in the next movie.